And the crowd goes. <laughs> so, um, so my title is actually Unicorn Whisperer. Um, I wish I was creative enough to have come up with that, but um, unicorn means something different to a lot of people, most of you in this room. What does that mean? Probably a Oh, a designer developer. Most people, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is billion dollar company. Um, so I came from a company called Evernote. Who here knows what Evernote is? Yeah. Who here uses it? <laughs> um, so I was employee number eight at Evernote. I was there for six years. And uh, in that time, I got to use WordPress quite a bit. Um, Evernote doesn't use it. Actually, no, Evernote does use it. Sorry, forgive that. Um, or it did at one point in time. And uh, we had a lot of different plugins that, that we used. But um, it, was, it was so integral uh, to a small business as it's growing because of the ease of use uh, that it has. So um, now what I do at Rocketeer is I help businesses to get off the ground and help them find the, easiness, uh, the ease of WordPress. So, I'm going to help you find the things that you can use out of the many, many plugins that are out there. So the agenda, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about me. Define what a plugin is, because some people actually don't know, amazingly. Tell you how to use them, and then get to some essential ones that I can't get, can't live without. So, brief bio of me. So the first time I got into computers was in 1982. I was six years old at the time, and I saw my first computer and fell in love. Um, it was a Trash 80. Who knows what that is? <laughs> um, I, I just, I was so in love. The first time I started programming, um, was probably when I was eight years old. I got a PC Junior. Uh, who knows what that one is? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was so upset because uh, I finished my first thousand line program. I, I'd sat there for like hours and programmed and programmed. And then I found out you had to have the basic cartridge in at the same time as the, <laughs> as the uh, card. And it didn't save. But Thankfully, I remembered all of that and was able to do it again, and I think I finished that same program in only 900 lines, so it was great. Um, then when I got my first modem, I became an IRC and BBS junkie, and it was amazing. Oh, another one, yes. Uh, I became a game designer um, because I just fell in love with all of that, and my first, when I was working for the government, I actually designed a MUD. <laughs> Who knows what a MUD is? Oh, somebody, yeah. So this was this got me into game design. Uh, I got hired by THQ as a game designer um, based on a mud that I designed for the government. And all of this is before WordPress came around. But these people that were playing muds and being on IRC and using the internet, they're the ones that realized that there was some kind of a thing, a community of people that wanted to be talking and communicating online. So all of this stuff was coded from scratch. And I noticed that there was this community of people that, that was interested in what somebody in New York had to say to somebody in LA. And that's the essence of WordPress. That's the, the code that has to say. So in 2003, when WordPress came around, since I'd been coding for years now, it was just it wasn't easy for me. It wasn't, I didn't get it. Now, it saves me so much time. I recommend it to everyone. Who here has that same experience? When they first saw it, they were like, yeah, yeah. So it's so easy now. I do the first thing out of my, wor my mouth when I'm talking to a new business is, you must use WordPress. That, your site, easy WordPress. So that's a little background on me. There are over 40,000 WordPress plugins. So wouldn't it be great if I went through all 40,000 of them right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm a CTO and advisor, not a WordPress expert. So this is going to be about the ones that I feel, my opinion, are the ones that are essential. Okay? So that's the disclaimer here. <laughs> so what are plugins? Like, come on, somebody give me a definition. What's a plugin? So the way, so it is uh, something that extends the functionality of WordPress. Um, the way I define a plugin is something that has a dependent component. Um, it adds features to an existing application, as you said, um, that enables customization. Um, and an example of this is uh, BuddyPress, for example. Who, use who uses BuddyPress here? Good, not many of you. <laughs> Sorry if there's a buddy press person in the room, but uh, as, as somebody that is a uh, forums type person, buddy press just, mm. <laughs> For buddy press people that are watching this video, sorry. <laughs> um, so when you're using a plugin, the way that I like to think about it is, it's not like, you need to think of what your aim is. Why are you choosing this plugin? Are you using it because you're trying to make your life easier? If so, stop right there. You need to choose a plugin based on the client experience, the customer experience. Because your plugin should be not, oh, well, I want to save myself a few minutes of time today, and therefore, that's the one I want. No. Look, think about it from the site. Like, I always close my eyes when I'm doing this because I'm like visualizing the best site on the internet. So think about the best site on the internet. And what, is, what does that look like? What would you, as the person going to that site, want it to look like, want it to feel like, want it to be? That will determine what plugin you should choose. Because if you are the coder and you're picking something just because it wants, you want it to make it easier on your life, well, yeah, there's plugins for that. But everything is, WordPress is about the reader. It's about the customer. And if you forget that for even a second, then you failed. So. When you're picking a plugin, there's only four features, I mean, four things that are in this task. You need to find it, then you need to install it, configure it, and then some of them need to add some code to different pages. It's pretty simple. And everyone follows this pattern. So the thing that I've done here is I've tr I try to find ones that you don't have to add too much extra code. They're easy to find. And the, it's just a click install and done. N very little configuration because, again, we want to make it, y we want to think of you as a customer as well. Because it is for you, uh, like you are somebody using the best site on the internet. But not every plugin designer thinks that way. <laughs> so, so if, if you have to do a little bit of configuration, that's okay. But um, if you can just find and install, that's the, that's the best. So, so where do we go to find these things? Remember, there's, there's 40,000 of these. So that's, that is a lot. You can use the WordPress plugin search. Um, the star ratings do help. Because, I mean, we're all WordPress people here. Uh, I review things. I will tell, I will say, this worked for me. This didn't work for my particular use case, but it is a good plugin. I do that a lot. I encourage you to do so as well. Um, don't leave a one star if it didn't work for you, like in your use case, but it works. Like, because that's just, that's just mean, I think. Um, so if it's featured, popular or beta testing, those tabs are there. 
If you go, word of warning, if you go into the beta testing tab, remember it is somebody that's trying something out. So make sure you give feedback to that plugin developer. Um, who here is a developer in the room? Yes. It would, do you use the beta testing section of WordPress? Okay. Um, as somebody that does offer beta tests myself, not for WordPress but for other things, the feedback is invaluable. So if you do use this, I encourage you to give feedback to the developers as much as possible. Um, so you can also use Google, but the problem with this is you need to know what you're looking for. And I don't know about you, but one of the things that people come to me for is because I have Google Foo, and they don't. <laughs> so um, they're like, how can you find that thing? So if you don't know what you're looking for in the first place, Google's not going to really help you. So looking for things like best plugins for food bloggers, that actually is pretty good. Um, you're going to find some great lists when you type like best SEO plugins. Um, there's some really awesome, like, you'll find like a, a blog post that probably one of us has written of 50, uh, 50 sites and plugins on this. Um, and then again, recommend, recommendations from other bloggers. So like the Las Vegas Food Blogger Alliance, uh, there's the Las Vegas Bloggers Facebook page, and so on. Uh, all of these will give you great recommendations for, for where to find plugins. So, and then, of course, should you pay or not pay for a plugin? There are over 22,000 free plugins, um, and you can easily find them on WordPress if you know what to search for. Another problem, though, are they supported? Are you going to get, like, are they tested? Are they relevant for what you're trying to do? If you pay, you're going to get support. It's going to be updated. But again, you're going to have to search for it because they're probably not going to be on WordPress.com. So there's a lot of back and forth on these. So now, what do I consider essential? And again, I say, what do I consider essential? Because I'm sure every single one of you is going to have uh, a yes or no or argument for every one of these on my list here. <laughs> so. So for me, the most important things that I install on any one of my clients' sites or my own are the security plugins. Hands down, the first thing. Um, who else is with me on that? Yeah. So for that, the first one that I install every time is a plugin called Force Strong Passwords. Anyone else install that one? Know what it is? Yeah, we got one here. Uh, so four strong passwords is great. Um, it includes a, a JavaScript powered password strength indicator. Um, and there's, because there's nothing right now in WordPress to stop a user from using a weak password. I've got good news for you. Oh, it's changing? WordPress 4.3. Oh. Uh, oh, good. So it's just changed? Great, but this one is is just great. Oh, sorry, I went ahead. This, I mean, it's it's just been so so cool for me forever. <laughs> uh, the next one is Clef two-factor authentication. Um, anyone else use this one? So so Clef is awesome because um, it allow it's free for two-factor authentication. It's a free one. Um, it allows you to use smartphones. Um, it removes the username and password field so once you've turned it on. And like it just adds two-factor authentication to your site. It does take a little bit of configuration um, for some of the extra stuff in there, but you can just, out of the box, it turns it on right away. So this one, if you're not using it right now, I suggest you go install it, turn that on. Um, and then the last one, WordFence. I'm sure most of you have this on already, but if you don't, again, 
uh, it's, it's an important one. Um, another one that I've always used, and I'm so glad that it's part of Jetpack right now, um, Brood is, is great. That's something that, like, if you have Jetpack installed, just flip that switch and turn it on, because Brute. 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 So it, that just keeps people from allowing, like doing brute force attacks on your database. It's just super great. So then SEO is, of course, the next thing. Because the first thing that any client comes to me and says is, I want my SEO. I want my SEO. Do my SEO for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, not quite understanding that no matter how SEO compliant your site is, uh, unless people know how, that you exist, all the SEO in the world isn't going to do anything. So, like, we'll make your site SEO optimized, great. But, like, you still have to go out and get people there. Um, so, but in order to do that, some great SEO plugins are Yoast SEO. The Yoast lady, is she in here right now? Yeah. Woohoo. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Yoast has been like the leader in this forever. Um, Yoast is amazing. Uh, it's just so super great. I, I can't stop saying wonderful things about Yoast. Um, Jetpack, um, I know there's people in here that absolutely hate Jetpack because of the things that it can do to bog down your database. But one thing that I recommend for clients that are not like savvy coders it, this is great for people when you're setting up a site and then you're handing it off. S like configure Jetpack for Photon, CDN, or something like that. Like the, the things that are useful in Jetpack for uh, a user that doesn't know anything about maintaining WordPress because Jetpack just takes care of it. So that's, I mean, especially Photon is, is useful there. Like if you don't want to install um, next gen or something like that. The related posts for WordPress plugin. Now, anything that you see an asterisk with is going to be a premium purchase here. Uh, related posts for WordPress is, is premium. It's, it's pretty cool in that it allows you to um, uh, link the related posts to each other with like only one click, and it doesn't do, like it doesn't have a database crunch every time. So it's not pulling a lot of, I mean, as, as Jeff was saying before, uh, anytime you have a related post plugin, it's like a, a huge database load and it slows down your site. This one is the least database heavy that I've ever found. So if you want to do related posts, then this is the one to use. Better internal link search. Who knows what internal linking is? Yeah. So internal linking is something that can really, really boost your SEO score really quick. Um, it's, it's kind of that annoying thing when you go to a site and like all of a sudden you see like every other word on the page is, is like highlighted because, oh, well, the word car, you highlight it and like you, you accidentally clicked it and now you're in like a post from 2007 um, about like, the new car that came out then. Well, if it's done right, then there'll only be like three links, they'll be useful, and they go to important posts on your site. Um, so this will allow you, when you're creating a new post, to do internal links, to have like a, a little tree that will take you to, to relevant posts on your site, and every time you have another internal link, it is a real link that will up your, uh, however many links that Google thinks you have. So this is useful. It does take effort because you have to actually be like, oh, well, I want this to link here um, every time you create a new post. But it's very important. Uh, so next, sales is a very, very useful topic. Who here sells, has a site where they sell things? Not many, actually, that's, but if you are creating sites where you're selling things, there's only one thing that you should be using. Okay. 
Are you WooCommerce back there? Do you sell WooCommerce? No, you just you just agree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so easy to use. I mean, and I mean, forgive me, WordPress guys, because I I know that you have a sales platform, but I've never used it. <laughs> I just install WooCommerce automatically because there's so many plugins you can use for everything. And it's so wonderful and it's so supported and it's such a great system. So WooCommerce, thank you. Um, yes. So images. <sighs> there's so many image plugins out there. And especially, like, this is the thing that, like, gives me the worst feeling in the world when I am creating a site and then I have to hand it off to a client because I know they're going to screw this up. I know they're going to upload, a f uh, upload images and they're going to be terrible. They're going to pick the worst images. They're going to crop them wrong. They're going to do things. So images, this is, yeah. Uh, I, I hate to see people doing this. It's yeah, yeah I know. So Foo Gallery, this thank you Foo people for creating this. Foo Gallery is is a beautiful masonry gallery that makes everything wonderful. It everything's displayed beautifully. It's responsive. It makes all of the images, no matter what they look like, just so pretty and and great and it just works in any theme that I've tried to put it in. So Foo Gallery is a, is a great replacement for NextGen. So if you're tired of using NextGen, Foo is great. Simple Image Widget is really cool because like all it does is it just puts an image in the widget. I mean, it's just a widget for images. It just puts your image where it is. So that's it. And some t like how many times have you been trying to like just put an, an image somewhere and you couldn't do it? And there, it just does it. So I love that one. <laughs> um, is, there, is there a way to randomize it so that you can just have a folder of images? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Does it? Yeah. Um, responsive images. Uh, R I C G responsive images. Um, it makes all of your images responsive. Like it. It. Um, it takes all of the available image sizes as you upload things and like so you take say you take a like a 9000 by 3000 image it's going to make all of the i think it's 24 current sizes that you need now for like Facebook and Google and all of them and it just takes all of them and then like scraps the huge file that you don't need so this one's great uh, I mean, they're all great. Force regenerate thumbnails. You probably use this one too, some of you. Um, without even thinking, you probably install that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, force regenerate thumbnails. So I had a friend of mine call me the other day. She was freaking out because somebody was going to charge her five hundred dollars to clear out all of the old images that she had on her database. $500 because it was like she had a year's worth of just images backing it up and the database was so slow and she couldn't get rid of the, the white screen of death. So I was like, wait, 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 wait. Just install this and like have it go through and clear everything out. And it did that. It got rid of all of the old images and it cleared out that like cache image directory. And she's like, oh my God, this free plugin just saved me $500. And she was so thrilled. So if, if just to like install it for a minute, clear out all of the crap, and then uninstall it, it's worth it. But I just leave it because it's so useful. I am Sanity. If it works with your theme, which it doesn't work with every theme, but like four out of five it does, this one's awesome because it does similar to um, the responsive images, this one will take, like, it does a bulk resize on images that you already have up there, and it will uh, take the images to make them, like, you don't need that 9,000 by 3,000 image. Just 
be like, hey, we want it to be a normal size, not taking up all this room on our server, even if you have an unlimited VPS database size. So just stop. Yes, yes, which doesn't work anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I am sanity can replace WP smush it. So the back end, um, so these are things that the user would never see, but they do make your, your life much easier. First of these that I always install is duplicate post. <laughs> like, because if I create something, uh, like, if I great make a great template or, or a great post, sometimes I just want to copy it because it's like, hey, it was great. So duplicate post is awesome. Why doesn't WordPress have that right away? I don't know. Um, hey, I'm automatic guys, put it in there. Um, page builder by site origin. I actually don't use page builders, but when I'm handing a site off to someone, it's easier for them like, because I'm a coder, I like to get into the PHP, like, page builders kind of freak me out. But, like, my best friend is a designer, so she can't do the PHP, and she likes to do the moving around with the page builders. So, this is perfect if you're a designer. Restrict content. If you have a membership site, uh, if you are trying to keep people keep things behind a, a paywall, um, or even just a registration wall, restrict content is the one to use. It's simple, it's easy, it works with every theme I've ever tried with, it with. So. Search WP. Uh, the, the, the regular WordPress search doesn't really search on much. And you have to pay f um, if you want to use the Google search, plus it like says, like, powered by Google. So search WP is like $39 a year, and uh, it allows you to search on literally anything in the database table. And you can put that around for the uh, users to search on. So it gives everyone a much better experience, because you can search in front and in back. So it's great. Content-aware sidebars. <laughs> Somebody knows what content aware sidebars are. Um, have you ever been on a site and you notice suddenly on the side it knows like what you were reading, not just on this page, but on the one, the last page and the page before it? Uh, that is content aware sidebars. Uh, so this allows you to create, this does require some configuration because you're going to have to give it the information that, like a pool of information that you want it to display based on the pages that somebody's using or that, that they're viewing. But um, once you've set this up, it is so cool. Um, I have a, a little quote from a review that somebody said on it. Uh, they said, it displays a list of resources in the sidebar that are specific to the course content on that page from uh, their LMS that they created. So if, if like somebody was going through like a course, it was just popping up, oh, well, here's the resources, like the FAQ or, or downloads, without them ever actually coding that. So this is a really useful one, like especially if you have a sales site or something. So it, like it can pop up, oh, these are the popular items. It's very cool. <coughs> Commenting. Who here has turned off commenting altogether on their site? <laughs> yeah, and commenting is weird because it's, like some people hate it, some people love it, some people turn it, like just plug in live fire or disgust or something. So yeah, it's, it's just usually nobody knows entirely what to do with commenting, so. Um, if you leave the WordPress comments on, this is a great plugin because it allows you to just download the, com the emails of the commenters in a CSV file. So I think that makes it useful, although most of the emails you're gonna get are probably like spammers from the Philippines or India or something like that, so uh, the usefulness, I don't know. Um, disable comments, if you are somebody that wants to disable the comments, 
this is the plugin for you. Um, just put it on, it disables the comments either site wide or category or tag or however you want. So you can, you can leave comments open in like one specific category or disable them just for admin or something like that. And Discuss is a, a very popular commenting system that overrides the WordPress native plugin and, I mean, the WordPress native commenting system and then it will help your blog be seen uh, with other uh, sites in the Discuss system. The problem with that is that people are required to register on Discuss. The benefit of that is that your site is now getting the benefit of being in the, the discuss directory. So you have, to, you have to decide whether or not you, you're, you want to use comments and how to use it. There are other ones as well. Um, Facebook, you can do Facebook comments. Um, however, with the changes in Facebook and the way things are shared, the, the benefits of using that are actually much lower. Um, I've seen uh, in, in the sites that we had Facebook comments turned on, the, the, the site usage actually went down with Facebook comments turned on, so we actually just turned that off and went to discuss. So, uh, communication. Gravity forms. If you're using forms on your site, it's probably gravity. If you're not using forms on your site, you should be using gravity. That's <laughs> it is a paid service. Um, you pay once, I believe, and, um, and then you, you have access to the most amazing forms that exist for WordPress. You can do conditional fields. They can total. They can, um, they can do all sorts of things. For an example that, uh, of a really cool gravity form that I have is um, we're taking orders for a, uh, a donut store um, where like the catering form, it allows you to decide like which donuts you want in the box, how many, do you want it to be a recurring order, how much, like is it delivery, is there tax, and then like it can add it up, send it to you, and submit. So like this is a gravity form that is being used. Um, custom field suite is really cool because uh, it also works with Gravity Forms, but you can then add whatever custom fields you want into WordPress. If you've ever been trying to uh, create, if you've ever been like, I want a field that's not there for a submission form or something, um, cut, this makes it the most easy thing, whether you're an advanced or an e a beginner. MailChimp. You're collecting email addresses, or you should be. And MailChimp is the place where they should be going. Because if they're not, or, I mean, I prefer MailChimp. If you're, I mean, Mail, Mad Mimi or, or something like that. If you like something else like SendGrid, great. But you should be sending them to somewhere where they're actionable. If you're not, please talk to me after this so I can explain that to you in <laughs> further detail. Um, who here has a business of businesses, like where, where your business is to like take like a brick and mortar kind of store? No one? All right. Okay. Well, for this, like it's helping people find the Google Places reviews, um, getting, making sure people know what the testimonials are. Uh, that's important. That's something I deal with a lot. Like, for example, that donut shop, like helping aggregate all of the reviews that are online, uh, the Google Places Reviews is a great uh, plugin for that. Yelp Widget Pro is also awesome. <laughs> Do you use that one? Oh, you did? Oh, that's yours. Oh, oh very cool. Uh, so Yelp Widget Pro and Google Places Reviews are awesome because they do, I mean, they so easily just pull in those reviews and they're awesome testimonials. Um, Yellow Pages reviews, awesome, yes. So, I mean, if you are a brick and mortar or you have, or your business is showing up in any of these places or your client is the kind that was doing that, these reviews, I mean, these must be there. Let's see, are we gonna go four for four? Oh, no. 
No? All right. So good reviews for WordPress um, is, I particularly love this one um, because it's, it's awesome uh, in that users on your site can't enter a review. The testimonials have to come from, from somewhere else on the web, which from a business standpoint shows that you are more trusted. Like it shows that you are a trusted source pulling in this information. If people are able to enter the review on your site, which isn't as trusted as like Google or Yelp or something else, then like it actually will lower your ranking um, in their eyes. It's a psychological thing. So good reviews for WordPress is a great plugin because they specifically don't allow users to enter any reviews through it, and you have to go elsewhere to see it. So it's it's a great uh, a great idea. So then the fun database stuff. I know I'm going through so many of these, but there's there's forty thousand. I told you I was going to go through all of them. No. Um, so Vault Press. Vault Press is is awesome. Like it was mentioned a couple times today already. Um, so I don't have to go into detail, but the importance of backing up your site in a place that is not on the same server as your own is very, very, like, yes, you must not back up your site on your own site. That's, <laughs> does anyone not get that? Ra please raise your hand if you don't get that. Okay, good. Um, WP Rocket is one of my favorite caching plugins right now. I love it more than, than Total Cache. Because Total Cache, if you don't know how to set it up correctly, will slow down your site more than your site was before you installed it. And that really defeats the purpose of installing a thing to speed up your website. So I mean, it, it will speed up your site if you configure it correctly. WP Rocket will do it for you without having to configure it if you pay them 40 bucks. So pay the 40 bucks, save the time. Safe redirect manager. How many times on your site have you ended up with a 404 because you forgot something? I do it. I delete a page and I forget. So this, um, this is a great one. Another one, if you have a site where you're selling things, instead of safe redirect manager, I would recommend silent salesman. Silent salesman is awesome. Uh, because it actually just pops up a page of the most popular things that have been sold. Uh, it's like, oh, like, you know, you caught us in the kitchen or something, but here, buy these things instead. Um, so it, we've got some specialty ones. Easy recipe. Um, if you are a food blog or a recipe site or something like this, this makes any recipe that's posted on your site look awesome, able to... Uh, convert like grams to ounces and things like that and, and print out these recipe cards really cool. So like if, if you're doing a food blog or you're creating a site for somebody that wants it to be like that, easy recipe is cool. Editorial calendar, if you are publishing a lot of, of blogs, uh, articles, you must have editorial calendar installed. Um, some people use CoSchedule. Um, I just prefer this one. Seamless donations. Is that the person that's in the room, or is, am I getting yelled at? <laughs> oh, yeah. So seamless donations is so easy to use. Um, I actually happen to be on the board of a nonprofit, and uh, it's so simple that, like, this is just, it works with crowdfunding campaigns really seamlessly. <laughs> so we just use this a lot. Um, press books. Yeah, you, oh, that's, is that a Yoast one, or you just use it? Yeah, Pressbooks is great because you can turn your site or your blog posts or anything into ebooks really quickly. It just it's so simple. Um, and WYSIWYG or VYSIWYG, I'm not sure how they say it, um, but ha, does anyone know what this one is? Because it's it's new, it's in beta. Yeah, so this is cool especially if you're a small business, don't have time to do anything, it turns your site into a, a, a native iOS or Android app with notifications and everything. So anytime you, you have like a new blog post or a new page update, it, has, it makes a new app. I mean, it uh, sends a push notification. So this is super cool for the, the small business owner that doesn't have the time or the knowledge to code their own app. 
Now, these are just my personal faves that don't have really any bearing on anybody else's stuff, but I'm putting them in here anyway because it's fun. Um, sumo me. I love me some sumo me. Um, if you're not using this, I think, I, I, don't, I don't know why everyone's not using this. So they, they are an amazing group right now. Everything they put out is like gold at the moment. Um, they have, the last product that they added to Sumo Me was like a welcome mat thing that just immediately creates a landing page um, on whatever page you put it on without any coding. And so it has like the, right in the center, it has the give me your email address. And, and it's so simple to configure. And even though those, those welcome mat landing pages things are so annoying, uh, they work. <laughs> and it connects with MailChimp and so, and they have heat maps and, and everything else. So I love Sumo Me. Thank you, Sumo Me. Um, you make my life so easy. Um, disable WP toolbar removal. That is a mouthful, but I'm, even though I'm not a visual person, I have a little bit of OCD and I can't stand that WP toolbar at the top, the admin bar. I, I know how to type I know how to get to my admin screen. I don't want to see it when I'm looking at my website. So uh, that just removes it for me. Um, RSS post importer. I have a little bit of ADD as well and I'm posting on like Quora and LinkedIn and, and Medium and all sorts of other things. Um, I don't always remember where I write something, um, but I do have, I do can, I can access the RSS feeds for it. So this will suck in all of the content that I'm writing everywhere else on the internet um, and put it into a draft post, complete with images and everything else, full, full text RSS, and allow me to then edit it to create a new post on my blog. <laughs> yeah, so that's really great. Um, and in the, same, um, in the same vein, quick featured images uh, allows you to select uh, like a folder of images uh, that you can just do like, okay, I always want this, these images to randomize to become our featured images um, in case I forget to select a featured image because like how annoying is it to, uh, to do that, to not have a featured image. Um, Express Curate is great when you're going on the web to, uh, to pick a, a, to pick a, a if you're clipping things on the web, you can create like a curated post. So I just wanted to, oh yeah, perfect pull quotes allows you to make those little pull quotes like to stand out really quickly. And Google Analyticator um, lets you do Google Analytics uh, on the thing. So uh, yeah, so installing plugins is super easy. Uh, we all know how to do that. And um, some plugins just require a little bit more than others. But uh, yeah, I would just suggest use a test environment, backup WordPress, keep all of it current, use only the plugins tested with the version you're using and become familiar with the white screen of death because you're gonna hit it no matter what you do. Um, and that's it. <laughs> so. Thank you.